Hey guys, so this is the Asus Tinkerboard right here. Now I did an unboxing video of this a couple years back and I kind of just let this sit on my shelf, which I kind of really regret now because this thing is pretty cool. And there, there are some newer models out now. Um, I'm gonna probably wanna explore those too, but we're gonna be, be using this a lot more now. I'm gonna actually try to get some projects in. I know this, is, this was supposed to be, uh, I was supposed to do this a long time ago, but kind of got caught up with a ton of other things, but now I'm doing it. So I've actually installed Debian on this now and um, do, trying it out, just doing some initial tests and stuff. I also um, I also just wrote Android to another SD card. So I'm going to be testing that out on the next video too. And then I'm going to come back to, I'm going to swap the SD card out again and test some things out on Debian, maybe uh, try to uh, connect some components, some sensors and stuff to this and see what we can do with it. Maybe attach a camera, maybe attach one of the displays here. So currently I have... Um, HDMI plugged in here and I have an orange pie monitor connected over here. I already, I put a, and yeah, I'll just ignore all the hot glue on the surface that I'm, I'm working on. I have some hardened hot glue here. Just, just ignore that. I just haven't had a chance to kind of chip that off yet. But any case, that's from something else I was working on. But, um, yeah, this is, this is basically the desktop that you get with this. So, um, currently I like, I have headphones plugged in. I tested those out. They're working. I have a, a Bluetooth dongle for a Bluetooth keyboard that I'm going to be using. Um, so my HDMI and power coming through USB and you, you, they recommend uh two and a half, um, two and a half amps of power and it's going to be, you know, five volt cause it's through USB. So I'm, I'm actually using this keyboard and trackpad to control it. Now, um, I just put out another video, um, uh, another video reviewing this and another one showing how I updated the battery and, and got that working. So uh, you might want to go and check those out. Also hit the subscribe button while you're at it. But anyways, this is the desktop that comes with it. And I've done a few things with it. Um, first thing, uh, first, so it comes with, uh, it comes with Chromium and, um, let's see here. And this thing just died on me. I, imagine I must, uh, you know, what? I'm going to cut this out and cut back. So, oh, you know, what? It's, it's working. Maybe the battery might be low on this because I just, I got the new battery, just st stuck it in this keyboard and, uh, it was working perfectly. I didn't bother to uh, charge it or anything. So I'm not sure how much of a charge it has, but, um, lo it looks like it's good now after, uh, turning it off and back on. So let's see here. So yeah, there we go. See, see that trackpad's working great. Um, everything should be fine. So anyways, this, uh, it comes with Chromium and it's running, it's, it's, this is Debian. It's running LXDE as the desktop and they call this Tinker OS, but it's basically just Debian with, um, De Debian with, uh, LXDE as the desktop. Now I downloaded this from Asus. Um, so this is their operating system that's meant to be compatible with the, uh, with the Tinker board. So this is all running off of this. Now this, the system on a chip here is actually getting pretty hot. So that does deserve, I think it deserves to have a, uh, a heat sink on it. We might do that in the future, but we'll see. Um, that said, yeah, I would definitely recommend, oh, side note, I would definitely recommend this orange pie monitor and, uh, this keyboard check, check for the links in the description. And, um, um, let's see here. So I've tested out a few things on this. Um, first thing, first problem I had is a lot of web pages. SSL won't work if you're, the date on your computer is wrong. The date on this was wrong. I think I just needed time for NTP to sync up. It, it thought it was 2016. So NTP synced up and it is now showing 2023. So, um, I, I did run an apt update and, uh, in the time that I ran that, I think it just I, I don't think it has anything to do with me running the apt update. That wouldn't make any sense. But uh, NTP just started working and the, the date is set correctly and no no issue now. Um, so I've tried YouTube and uh, this this works. So um, you can play, play uh, you know, I can browse the web, play YouTube videos like this. So uh, see, there's a little bit of, uh, there's a little bit, little bit, bit of pixelization. Um, but overall it, it works pretty smoothly most of the time and it'll start, I'll see some distortion and pixelization there. I don't know if it's like the, the graphics card on that's built into this or, or maybe it's just my network connection and I'm having bad luck today, but I did notice that. But most of the time you don't even notice it. It's just, you know, par for the course watching YouTube. But, um, any case, yeah, it seems to be working pretty nicely there. And, um, yeah, this is the, yeah, this is the page for the tinker board itself. Um, what, what else do we have here? 
Um, yeah, so scroll up and down, regular web browsing experience. It's running Chromium, basically the the free version of uh, Google Chrome. This is what came installed by default. They came with Chromium rather than Firefox. So, some systems like to come with Firefox by default. Now, it comes with a lot of stuff installed. Um, standard stuff like you would find on the Raspberry Pi. Um, yeah, please excuse the, the sound in the background there. So anyways, um, yeah, it comes with a lot of standard tools like LeafPad, you know, it's like a, a really a slim and, and lean uh, text editor, screenshot tool, Vim, Arch all, all just standard stuff comes with Scratch. So you can uh, try out, um, it's for learning programming. It's like a visual programming environment, uh, great for education and stuff. So that, that's all fine and great and everything. And I haven't done a ton with this yet, but let's let's look at what else we have on here. So, yeah, Internet only has Chromium programming with Idle, Scratch, uh, Sound. So we have Cheese, Alex, there's just some standard stuff like the media player and stuff. But the, the one thing down here I should mention, Pulse Audio vol Volume Control. This was terrible. I, I, like it was really just a horrible tool to work with. And I, I'm going to have to learn to work with Pulse Audio from the command line or install some other tool for that to work. Now, I was able to get audio working on this for YouTube with my headphones. So um, you'll, you'll, you'll notice I have my headphone jack plugged in here. Now audio should be working on, there, there are built-in speakers in this monitor, so it should be working here. I don't know if I have to work on some, tweak something in the pulse audio mixer or something, but for whatever reason that didn't work by default. I don't know if it was selecting, um, you know, the headphone jack by default or what. Um, I plugged in my headphones and those did not receive audio by default. So through a combination of me um, poking around in pulse audio volume control and plugging and unplugging my headphone jack, it started working. So I'm not sure what was going on with it, but it, it did it did eventually start working. So that was a little bit of a pain. It should be, I think it should be a little bit more straightforward than that. But um, anyways, it is what it is. I got it working. So that works. And that's mostly what I wanted to, I wanted to show you a few things on the command line also. So let's minimize this. And this is a bad day for me to be recording a video. There's all kinds of noise in the background, but I'm going to go ahead anyways, because I want to get this video out and get on to more interesting projects. So yeah, I kind of sound like I'm in a construction zone now, huh? So let's clear this. So, oops. So I'm, I'm basically typing on this thing now, which is, this is fine. It's not like a real keyboard though. So yeah, clear, clear the screen. And there we go. All right. So we can use the up arrow here to check things in our history. So we can say like LS CPU and you can see like, uh, you have online CPU list zero through three. We have four CPUs. So we have a basically a quad core CPU. Um, and it gives us some information about like the sockets and stuff, the model name. It's an ARM7 processor, revision one. So megahertz, uh, CPU minimum and maximum megahertz, uh, stuff like that. Um, let, let's see here. We, we could say LSCPU dash E and get a, a printout like that of the different CPUs. Um, what, what else can we do? Um, uptime so th there's the uptime um yes yeah, it's, it's been up for so there's the load average is pretty low right now um what what else uh let, let, let's check uh disk space df dash h and let's check our disk space on here so yeah we, we've got uh the, the disk is 15 so it's a 16 gig um SD card. So that would be the SD card on the back here. So that's the root file system. And that's what we're seeing right here. Our root file system, 16 gig, that's the SD card. Only 2.7 is used. So we have 12 gigs available. So 20, 20% usage. That's kind of nice. Um, let's check our memory. Um, and what else did we want to check? So let's see here. So memory, um, this is probably hard to see with how I'm, I'm zoomed in. So I'm, I'm just, 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 I, I guess just go based on my voice. If this, if the text is too small, 
Um, I almost feel like I should adjust this, but I don't know if I'm going to be doing that right now. Um, is there something to, yeah, pe people are going to be, yeah, let, let me see if I can zoom in on this. This is not quite as convenient as my regular Linux desktop, but any case. All right, so that should be slightly better. Probably still, the, the font is probably still a little bit small. But in any case, you can see memory um, total. We got two gigs of memory, so it's showing up as 1.9. Um, we're using 589 gigs. That's with Chrome running. It's going to be a whole lot less. You know, if we kill Chrome, um, we, we can get that RAM usage way down. So let, let's actually try that. Um, because I know this is like a, a leaner system. I know there's going to be some Chrome processes running in the background, but that should actually take care of a lot of it. So let's run free-h again. See, we're down to 169 megs used, and I think it was might have been slightly less. I forget. But um, it's just relatively low usage for the, you know, the year 2023. Um, I, I think it'll get down lower if we never started Chrome or if we killed all the Chrome pro processes manually. Like I, I know there are Chrome processes running in the background. So we got, you know, 900 free. Um, we got some share, some buffering and caching go going on. So even though we have 900 megs free, we actually have 1.6 gigs available. So that's the free and the buffered stuff. So the stuff being used for buffers can get, can be uh, freed up to be used if, if needed. So there's that. We're not using any swap space, which is a good thing. Um, so two gigs is relatively low. Um, we got a quad core system with two gigs of RAM, relatively low RAM, but it still works pretty well for most things. But um, like if I if you were to buy a desktop system or a laptop these days, I'd say get at least four gigs. Really, you want to go eight on the low end, uh, but really four should be the absolute minimum. Um, and I, I generally go way higher than that. But for a, for a single board computer, that's pretty decent. Although these days you're getting them with uh, really high amounts. I think I've seen them even go higher than 16. Um, I forget how much higher off the top of my head, but it yeah, definitely the no, normally the higher end for an SBC is going to be around 16 if it's, it's if it's ARM based. Um, let's see what else do we want to show you. Let's let's try get all right. Let's see slash. All right, that's not too bad. The slash is kind of accessible on this keyboard. And there we go. Debian GNU Linux, GNU Linux or whatever, 9, so Debian 9 on here. Um, <clears throat> what, what, what else? And this is the newest version that's supplied as, this is basically Tinker OS by Asus, and this is the newest version that they have on their site, so the newest version of the software that is specifically designed to support their uh, single board computer, so it specifically supports their hardware. And, um, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people like to complain that Raspberry Pi alternatives are not as, uh, they like to complain that they're not as well. People like to cl complain that they're not as well supported, but, um, I mean, they're, they're, I mean, maybe you're not getting the most cutting edge, bleeding edge software. And if ASUS stops supporting it, you won't have the latest stuff and someone will have to do it themselves. But that's like any hardware out there. Um, so maybe you'll have less support than Raspberry Pi, but they, they are putting out their own versions of the OS to support this. So um, in, in these days, you know, with how hard it is to get your hands on a Raspberry Pi, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if that really, uh, I mean, Raspberry Pi is great, but I, I don't think these are a bad alternative. This is a great alternative to a Raspberry Pi. I mean, you could all the, anything you would want to do with this, you can still, you know, you can still program the GPIO pins and do all the normal stuff you would want to do with it. You don't have to have the latest cutting edge version of the Linux kernel, as so long as the version you have supports the hardware and works great. Now it's ideal if it's great if they keep coming out with new versions, but it's not as if it's it's definitely not as if the Raspberry Pi Foundation is putting out you know cutting edge versions of their OS either. I mean they're barely supporting 64 bit, so you know you got to consider that. So um, I mean I I really kind of don't believe in that criticism. So yeah, I I don't really believe in that criticism of Raspberry Pi alternatives. I, I think they're great. I think they're supported as well as they need to be for the most part. Sure, they could have better support in some cases, but I, I think they do. I think these companies do a pretty good job, and I think this is you're going to see more and more support for them as they become more and more popular. Uh, so yeah, there's that. So there there are a lot of others. Um, I mean, Asus. This is a great product by Asus. They also have uh, 
orange pies, banana pies, and all sorts of other stuff. And we're going to cover all of that stuff. So we're, we're covering all sorts of different products. And we're still covering lots of raspberry pie stuff. So if, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, you know, you might want to hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell icon so YouTube actually lets you, lets you know when we come out with a new video. You're not going to want to miss out on this stuff. Um, if you know something that, that I don't know, go ahead and leave a comment down below. And, um, you know, not just for me, but for the next person who watches this video, anything you want to say, you know, just leave a comment down below, questions, comments, criticisms, whatever you want to say, we do want to hear it. Um, and uh, that's about it for today. So uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on that next video. So one, one other thing to note is that Wi-Fi was pretty easy to set up with this. I didn't fiddle around with the command line at all. I mean, you could, and it's going to be different depending on which OS you, you use. So uh, it's a pain each time. But, uh, you, know, you know, just because it's different for each OS, um, in general, it's not hard to set up Wi-Fi on the command line. But um, over here, we, we basically just use the GUI. So we didn't really even have to think about it. Um, so basically connect to my wireless access point here. And uh, basically just click on it, type in my password, and it's good to go. So that was pretty easy and uh, made setting this up pretty quick. So basically set up my Wi-Fi, um, got online, had to, you know, get the time synced and, you know, get the right date on my, my uh, get the right date on my system so that I could actually view websites and so SSL would work properly. And after that, fiddle around with the audio so I could actually watch YouTube videos with audio. Um, you know, I'm plugging in, plugging the jack and uh, fiddling around with um, pulse audio controls. So, you know, that was all fine and great, all relatively easy, no big deal there. Um, seems to be working pretty nicely and seems to perform relatively well. Um, not not as great it's not as great as some systems but um better than better than a lot of systems it's pretty good for a small system like this uh for a small affordable system like this i know prices are going up even on this thing but um yeah pretty great system now we, we haven't done any benchmarks in this video but we're gonna probably do some in the future and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have a lot of great projects coming up in the future um working with sensors and other things that you can connect to the gpio pin so definitely stay tuned for that